Hello there, Leo listeners. Cara here from leolistening.com, where I help intrepid travellers and adventurous expats improve their English listening skills through movies. So I run a movie club for English students, and in February, we watched the 1995 movie version of Sense and Sensibility, directed by Ang Lee and starring famous British actors such as Hugh Grant, Emma Thompson, Alan Rickman, and a very young Kate Winslet. So the movie is based on the novel of the same name and is about two very different sisters, Marianne and Eleanor, and their search for love. Now, as you can imagine, the English language has changed quite a lot since the start of the 19th century, which is when the novel was published. And even the title needs a translation, to be honest. So Sense and Sensibility refers to the personalities of the two sisters. So Sense refers to Eleanor, who is the more sensible, logical, rational one, while Sensibility refers to Marianne, who is more emotional and romantic. Now, in modern English, instead of sensibility, we would probably say sensitivity. And the same is true of some of the other language in the movie. So we're going to look at part of a scene that we worked on with my students and translate some of the language into modern English. So in this scene, we see John Willoughby carrying Marianne back home to her family because in the previous scene, Marianne was out walking in the rain when she slipped and fell and hurt her ankle. And then it just so happens that John Willoughby was on his horse at the same time, and he was able to save her and take her home. And this is how they meet each other. So the whole family is really impressed with them, apart maybe from Eleanor, who's a bit skeptical. So let's watch the first minute of the scene, and I'll take you through some parts that I think could be translated into modern English. Last. She fell over. She fell down and he's carrying her. What? Mary Ann, my darling. Are you all right? It's a, it's a twisted ankle. Do not be alarmed, Mama. He's <laughs> So, uh, Marianne's mother and sisters ask her, are, are you all right? And that's, uh, in fact, what we would say today in modern English. And then uh, Marianne responds by saying, do not be alarmed, Mama. Uh, this is a little old fashioned. I think a, a teenage girl these days would say something like, oh, you know, don't worry, Mom. It's nothing, nothing to worry about. No sweat, no panic, expressions like these. I told you it's not serious. I took liberty of feeling the bone and it's perfectly sound. So John says, it's a bit hard to understand because he's kind of breathless and everyone's speaking quickly. He says, I took the liberty of feeling the bone and it's perfectly sound. Um, I suppose that hasn't changed massively. Maybe he might say something like, you know, uh, I checked the bone and it's fine. You know, something a bit more simple. That does sound a little bit formal and a bit old fashioned. I took the liberty of feeling. You would just say, you know, I checked the bone, it's fine. Sir, I cannot even begin to thank you. Please do not think of it. I'm honoured to be of service. Please. So, John, we're targeting John a lot, <laughs> says, please do not think of it. I am honoured to be of service. So again, this is a little formal, a little old fashioned. Probably in more modern English, we would say something like, um, oh, you know, no worries. Um, it's no big deal. Um, happy to help rather than I'm honoured to be of service. That sounds a bit, um, a bit over the top almost. Do not be seated. Pray excuse me, I have no... So um, the sister's mother, their mother, <laughs> offers him a seat by saying, please, will you not be seated? Again, this is a bit formal, a bit old fashioned. Nowadays, we'd probably say something like, you know, uh, would you like to sit down or take a seat or have a seat? Something like this. I had to leave a watermark. But permit me to call tomorrow afternoon and inquire after the patient. 
Now, this is the section that probably needs the most updating. So Willoughby says, pray, excuse me, I have no desire to leave a watermark, but permit me to call tomorrow afternoon and inquire after the patient. So he doesn't want to sit down because he doesn't want to leave, you know, a wet mark on the, on the seat. Makes sense. He's just come in from the rain. So pray, excuse me. That's a bit old fashioned, a bit formal. Probably nowadays you might say something like, oh, I don't want to leave a mark or sorry, but I, I don't want to, you know, make a mess, leave a mark. And then, but permit me to call tomorrow afternoon. Now, this is interesting to, to call on someone. It's, it's true that to call makes us think of a, a phone call nowadays, but here he's referring to, you know, coming over tomorrow. And that's the kind of expression you would use instead. So in British English, we have a lot of nice phrasal verbs for talking about this idea of, of going somewhere or, or coming to someone's house. So we might say something like, oh, I'll pop over tomorrow. I'll come over tomorrow. I'll pop by tomorrow. Um, so come over, come by, pop by, pop over. These are all really cool modern expressions that we would use to talk about coming round to, some, to someone's house. Um, so permit me to call, let me pop over tomorrow and inquire after the patient. I think instead of inquire after the patient, it would we would say something like, and see how Marianne is doing. So if we take that section again, in modern English, it would sound something like, oh, sorry, I, I don't want to leave a, a mark, a watermark, but can I pop by tomorrow afternoon to, to check on Marianne, to see Marianne? Something like that would sound more up to date. We, sh we shall look forward to it. You're most kind. I'm sure you are. Thank you. Um, here, there's nothing that needs a, a big update. We could, we could use those expressions nowadays too. Margaret, give the gentleman his hat. Where the mother says, Margaret, give the gentleman his hat. We don't really refer to men as gentlemen anymore. Um, we'd probably just say, could you, could you, you know, give our guest his hat or something, or something like this. Thank you. His name, his name, his name. Please, could you tell us to whom we are so much obliged? John Willoughby of Allen, at your service, Mark. John Willoughby of Allen. So, of course, Marianne is desperate to know his name. So she's not going to go and look for him on Facebook or anything, but she, you know, she does want to know who, who he is. So he's John Willoughby of Allenham. So that is, um, I believe that's his house or his estate, something like this. He lives uh, nearby, obviously, which is why he was out on his horse uh, as well. What an impressive gentleman. And again, so where their mother says, what an impressive gentleman. Nowadays, you might say something like, what a man or what a guy or, you know, how impressive was he? Something like this. So that is a, an attempt at, at giving a more modern translation to some of the language in Sense and Sensibility. Even if some of the language is a little old fashioned, I still think the themes of the movie are fantastic for discussion. That's what the movie club is all about. It's all about discussing the themes that come up in movies. And as this is a movie about love, which is a timeless topic, there's always something to discuss. So if you're interested in Movie Club, it opens three times a year for enrollment and April is one of these times. So have a look in the description under this video, you'll see a link to join the waiting list and that's where you can get more information about Movie Club, about the exact dates that it's opening and that it's running, about how it works and you can see if it's for you. Otherwise, if you've in liked, if you've in, in liked, enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you really liked it, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.